I love what I do as a positivity coach. And I've had a lot of people ask me, how do I do that? How can I become a positive parenting coach? I've got five steps for you. I'm Dr. Paul Jenkins, a clinical psychologist turned positivity coach. I'm still a psychologist, but I practice primarily coaching and I've trained other people to do the same. I've been doing this for over 30 years now and I've got some very clear steps that you can take to do what I do. Here's your first step. Get clear about your why. A lot of people want to get into coaching for a lot of different reasons. What's your why? I tell you what, if you want to do this to make some quick money, mm, I'm a little worried about that. Not that you can't make money. I think you can. I absolutely know that you can. But if that's your purpose for getting in, I don't think it'll sustain you. I think it has to be driven by something much deeper. So dig deep a little here and see why you want to do this. I love being a coach and there's two reasons for that. Two primary reasons. One, I love seeing the lights go on for my clients. When they connect with a principle that has a real and lasting impact in their life and changes their level of joy in their relationships, in their family, that is awesome. I can do that all day long. The second reason I love being a coach is because it hones my skills. As a parent, for example, now my kids are grown now, but you know what? Coaching has helped me to keep front of mind and in constant daily practice, the principles that allow me to be a better father. And I love that. In fact, I call what I do a practice which is a good word for it because I practice every day the principles that you hear from me here on the channel in my coaching with clients, in my teaching, in my speaking, in my writing. It's everywhere in my life. I live it. And that's important because as you get clear about your why, here's a question I ask my coaches when I'm training them. What would you give your life for? You know, it sounds a little dramatic, but you know what? It's not because that's literally what you do if you engage in a full-time practice. You're giving your life for this endeavor. Now you're already giving your life for something else, right? So you can put that on the scale and decide what's going to be more important for me. This is some of the most meaningful work you could ever do. Get clear about your why because the why will sustain all of the difficult hows that you're gonna run up against. Step two, if you're going to do some coaching, you need to have some content to coach about. And this includes models and philosophies and theories that people can wrap their heads around. You don't have to reinvent the wheel. There's a lot of really great content out there. And a lot of times you can get license to use that content in your own coaching. If you've already got a model that you've worked through and that you've taught people before, then maybe you're already set for this. If you don't have one, I would invite you to learn more about the stages of moral development. We've talked about that here on the channel quite a bit. In fact, you can link to the video, Teaching Children Responsibility, where I go over those three stages of moral development. We also include that in our parenting courses and content over at Live On Purpose Central. The point is you need to have something as content. So think about what that would be and what you would want to share with people. Now, a quick note here. If you want to share content that you don't own the intellectual property rights for, make sure you secure those rights through an agreement with the owner of those rights. Otherwise, it's piracy and plagiarism. One other comment about the models and the philosophies, you don't have to be the expert in parenting. You do need to be an expert on whatever model it is that you're coaching on. That part's important. But you don't have to hold yourself under such pressure that you have to become the expert in parenting. That's okay. An obvious step that scares a lot of people away is to learn the business of coaching. There's a lot of aspects to this that you wouldn't necessarily anticipate. 
And it's important to get some people on board that you can associate with and connect with that will help you to learn the ropes. You're going to need to know how to set up your business. That might include getting a website. It certainly includes learning about marketing and sales. And you know what? As a psychologist and as a positivity coach, my heart is in helping people to connect to principles that have a meaningful impact in their life. I love to save and enrich key relationships with the things that I know and can share. I'm not as inclined to do all of these businessy things that actually support the practice. But I've learned that unless you have a good solid marketing strategy, unless you have sales processes in place that actually allow people to receive your service. It opens the door to your service. As one of my coaches, Amy Walker puts it, you've got to have those technical skills and abilities and a team around you that can fill in the gaps in the places where you have the weaknesses. You got to learn the business part of it. This creates the economic engine to support the mission. Don't be afraid of it. There's a lot of resources available to you, but you got to take it on. You have to take it seriously. It's going to be the context in which you can actually serve people. The fourth step is to associate with others who are doing the same thing. Not everybody does this exactly the same, but it can become very lonely to be a coach if you don't have somebody to associate with. You want to form groups where you can do networking and masterminding, where you can receive training together, where you can collaborate and solve problems together. This is a powerful part of coaching because it helps to expand and hone your own skills, but it also gives you a nice social network where you know that you're not alone. It's been interesting to me that sometimes in the industry, People want to remain isolated. I don't understand that because I get so much energy from being around others who get it. People like you who are interested in exploring this as an option will receive so much from your associations with other people. It's a really crucial part of becoming a positive parenting coach. On one of my podcast interviews recently, my guest told me, Dr. Paul, it's the start that stops us. Think about what that means for you. It's the start that stops us. People have a hard time taking that initial step, that first courageous step into whatever it is that they promised themselves they're going to do. If you really feel it in your heart to share what you've learned about being a parent and coaching other people in the most important job in the world? Are you ready to take courageous action? That's step number five. Take courageous action. If what you're about to do doesn't scare you a little bit, you're probably not thinking big enough because that means you're still in your comfort zone. The word courage itself implies fear. If you don't feel fear, it's not courage. It doesn't take courage to face something that doesn't make us a little nervous. When I say take courageous action, pay attention to what your own mind and heart is telling you about this. Identify what's next and do it. You've probably already guessed from the way I've been talking that I've got some resources for you. Live on Purpose Central is where you want to go. Go dot live on purpose central dot com. When you get there, you'll see the resources that we've set up and you'll be able to access also some things like training webinars so that you can become that coach that you have dreamed of becoming. Down face locked onto the phone.